Hello and welcome to our discussion on the topic Rural Development from the unit Current Challenges Facing the Indian Economy. Today's topic is on the rural credit, the importance of rural credit for the development of rural areas. So credit or capital is very important for the growth of any economy, more so for rural economy. It depends on the infusion or the supply, the pumping of capital from time to time. You have to keep on spending money to rural areas to see more productivity in agriculture and also in non-agricultural sector in rural areas. So if you talk about agricultural sectors, why do farmers need credit or capital? They need to borrow from various sources for their initial investment for seeds. These are the inputs, fertilizers, implements, and of course, other non-farm activities like family expenses or marriage, death, religious ceremonies. So normally, farmers do borrow money from various sources to meet the needs for farm and non-farm users so you understand the importance of credit credit is to take a loan and you have to repay it back so from where do they get this credit what are the sources at the time of independence money lenders and traders these are the two main sources of rural credit before and because they are powerful, they exploited small and marginal farmers and landless laborers by lending at a high rate of interest. If you take money from them, you have to repay back the principal plus the high interest rate. And sometimes they manipulate the accounts, they cheat on the account, sometimes they increase the um the rate, sometimes they the they so to say, double count the uh, amount that has been um, deposited by them because mostly farmers are illiterate. They always uh, believe whatsoever, whatever these traders or the money lenders saying it's true. So that's why they end up in a debt trap. So they end up in an indebtedness for a very long time, for generations after generation. So that was the situation. That's why rural areas, farmers, they are always exploited and there, there's no development at all. So we see a change in 1969 because of the adoption of social banking. Banking should see the well-being of the society. And also you have this agency, multi-agency approach to adequately meet the need of rural credit. There is a setting up of NABAT in 1982 to look after agriculture on one hand and also the overall rural development of the rural areas. This is done by the government of India along with the Reserve Bank of India. This um, NABAT coordinate, it brings together the activities of all institutions involved in the rural financing system. There are many financing systems, but this NABAT acts a head as the apex institution to all these. Okay, and nowadays you have a far more better system than before. The institutional structure of rural banking today consists of a set of multi-agency, many agencies institution, namely Rural Bank, Regional Rural Bank, RRB, so Bank Nafandong, Cooperative Banks like the Megalaya Apex Bank, Land Development Banks, and also there are self-help group nowadays, very important um, source of credit nowadays because mostly when you take money from the bank, especially you call them former credit system, you, uh, you have to provide with collateral, you have to provide with a mortgage, you have to uh, surrender your land or your house so, so that if you can't repay, they will take over your assets. So that is very uh, difficult for farmers for people from the rural areas to take loans so that's why these all these systems that are formal they are inadequate and so 
Because of that, the government feels the need, felt the need of the requirement of the self-help group. What is self-help group? Or what are the strategy of the self-help group? They promote theft. Theft is the habit of savings. In small proportion, no matter how small money you have, you can contribute together with a minimum contribution with each member. You form a member, contribute among them, you pool the money together. And so with this money that's been pooled like a drop of water, it's not it. The accumulated sum can be credited to the needy members of the fame, uh, members, needy members, and they have to repay it back in small instrument at a reasonable cheap rate of interest. So that's why they save the farmers from the clutches, from the uh, danger of the exploitation of the intermediaries like uh, money lenders and the uh, traders. This kind of system of credit provision also we can refer to as the micro credit programs. Micro, very small. So these self-help groups nowadays have helped especially the empowerment of women. However, all said, there has been a weakness of this kind of system and it's alleged that most of the time, borrowings by these members from the self-help groups are mainly confined to consumption instead of spending on uh, farm activities, production from agriculture, they spend on consumption to buy things at home. So that is not the reason why these self-help groups are being um, uh, instituted in the first place. So that's the kind of uh, negative aspect of this kind of self-help group. So that's what we talk about. We have seen through time the the provision of rural credit, not it. From the money lenders to the banking system, social banking, 1969, Nabat, not to forget, and also nowadays the self-help group. So we need to conclude by looking at the performance of the rural banking as a whole, because we need rapid expansion of the banking system if you want to bring about a positive effect, because it has a direct effect on rural farm production and non-farm, non-farm other activities other than agriculture like pottery, like can like weaving, cane ma uh, making furniture, weaving, and all those. That is, so they bring about income and employment. So we need more inclusive banking system because it can change the rural areas. And because of the, that, famines became the events of the past. We no longer hear nowadays people dying of starvation, not having food, because we have achieved food, food security which is reflected in the abundant buffer stock of grains. We have, um, we have enough food grains to feed the entire um, Indian citizen, so to say. So we, we, we are able to do that because people have the resource to cultivate. They have inputs. They have especially the credit available. With the possible exception of commercial bank, however, commercial banks like state bank, and 20 others, other formal institutions have failed. That is the critical aspect. We talk about the critical aspect of banking, rural banking. We have seen other institutions have, has, have failed to develop a culture of deposit mobilization. So there is a kind of uh, need to think and going forward from, from now to strengthen rural credit so that other system also can deliver the goods, not only from commercial bank. Agriculture, Loan default we see nowadays, rates have been chronically high. Loan default rates, that is the rate of people not paying back the loan they have taken. And it's very high. Why farmers fail to pay? Either because they deliberately refusing to pay back loan, they don't want to pay, or maybe because of the um, situation they are in, not able to repay the loan. You understand because they take the loan to cultivate, but at times there's crop failure because of flood, because of drought, because of um, climatic condition. Maybe they're not able to reap what they have expected. So that's why they don't have the money to pay. So there is a very high loan default from rural areas. So how to go about and improve the situation? To improve the situation, number one, it is suggested that banks need to change their approach from just being lenders to building up relationship banking with the borrowers. So that is the important point. 
that they not only like a robot giving loan, giving loan and asking them to repay back, but they, they should have a human heart bringing about a close relationship with these borrowers in rural areas so that there will be a connection, connectivity among them. It's not an understanding of the situation. Number two is the need to inculcating the habit of thrift. If we say it's a saving and not only we need to save, habit of saving, but also efficient utilization. We need to not waste the financial resources needs to be enhanced among the farmers too. We need to take the loan for productive activities, not for other non-productive because we can't repay back if we do that. So that's about um what we need to talk about in this session so you learn about how importance of credit in rural development credit is important everywhere especially because in india rural is so underdeveloped we need more of it